Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's Michael Martin. So I got some great feedback, a lot of comments, emails, and comments on a video I did last Thursday called Do You Buy Breakouts or Do You Buy on Pullbacks? Now, obviously, there's a lot of people out there who, who are, you know, stuck in the mud about one way or the other. Um, it really comes down to personal preference. I think um, with breakouts, you certainly can capture momentum if you're into that. I call momentum like the wind at your back, whereas if you're looking for pullbacks, you could certainly get smashed uh, in knowing that sometimes the pullbacks, like I had said in the original video, are the beginning of a correction. Uh, a, good, a, good, a good look at that would be if you put up, say, a 20-day moving average on, say, Coinbase, um, I might have... I might have said Bitcoin by mistake in the other video, but I certainly meant Coinbase if you look at the numbers where after it peaked at 180, it kind of pulled back in two days to the mean and then it kind of kept going. So how do you do it if you're going to buy pullbacks? You know, first of all, you have to think again, there's an emotional side and there's a financial part of it. So let me speak to the emotional side because the pullback, you have to really define yourself. Like what is it? Is it a mean reversion? Is it a percentage value for you based on the price? Or is it a number of points, meaning dollars and cents, right? So you can figure that out for yourself. But what you want to be careful of is thinking like, I remember talking about Microsoft and how back early in my career, when it was much less known uh, of a company, you know, people would shy away from things that were trading at 40 times forward earnings. Um, not be not really being ready, willing, and able to pay for the growth, which is their call. You know, I can't say so, you know. There's plenty of people who do nothing but buy every you know things that are less than 15, and they do okay. Um, it's probably more of an investor thing than a trader thing for sure. Um, but who knows? You can make up your own models with the technology today. You could test so much. We didn't have that really available to us then. You had to do it all by hand. So what you might want to consider on the emotional side, on the pullback, is do you think you're getting a better deal, right? Forget PEs, just look at the price. Do you think that there's more value when the, when the price goes down? I'm gonna say that that's not the case, but you might be able to build an argument yourself, and that's really what's most important because it comes down to consistent behavior, right? But in trading, really, we don't talk about value. That, again, is, a, is an investor word. So I don't try to mix my language or cloud my way of thinking because that's really what it does when you start using investor terms for trading and PE multiples and this and that. Or when you start talking about value, you know, you're really using investor language and overlaying that in the trading space. So I would say that value doesn't matter. I also know that there's a lot of smart people out there, and I'm going to guess that they're all smarter than me. And so with their proprietary knowledge, if they're the ones who are selling the thing down after a big run, the question is, why are they selling it? Right? Especially if we're making multi-year highs, historic highs, something like that. What is it that they think they know that might be superior to my own knowledge, fundamental or technical, that would cause them to want to execute a trade and offset their risk, also invite a tax, a tax bill? Um, you know, probably short-term capital gains. So having said that, you want to understand your own behavior because sometimes, like in the case of Coinbase, when it ran from 80, 90 to 180 over the course of what, what, what it was, two months, there wasn't really a pullback kind of an opportunity and missing those types of trades, a very, very expensive proposition. The opportunity cost is gigantic because, you know, that, that, can, that type of a move, depending on your position size, can really add a lot to your overall account balance. Remember, we're not watching our P&L, but we're going to trade our equity curve. So for all the, the stuff that you want to do intraday, you ought to have a small bit of your capital allocated to wanting to catch the longer-term moves where you can buy even a small amount of shares and just hold them, right? If you're trading calls, right, or even selling puts. I don't typically sell options because I don't want to know my max gain on the on day number one. You can roll your options, right, and get in and out of several options in and along the move, right? You don't have to hold it. Um, I talked about a recent move that I had been in in soybeans 
where I had bought some puts on the March contract at 16. They, the puts went to 40 as the, as the instrument went lower. And, you know, you have to roll the contracts down, right? So the, you sell out of the, there's the deltas change, right? So the delta went from, I think, 50 to like 67. Premium went from 16 to just under 40. It wasn't quite 40, but it's easy to just say 40. Um, and so when the when the, the instrument goes down, you want to sell those other puts, roll them down, take some money off the table and re, reprice them basically for at the money. Again, you'll change your delta, but you'll take money off the table and, and you can repurchase those moves accordingly um, because there's no real way to predict when the trend is going to end. For those of you who are looking for mean reversion style trades because you buy on pullbacks as opposed to breakouts, right? Breakout just means is it making a new high relative to a previous period of time? The longer the look back, typically the more statistically meaningful the number is. Um, and of course, if you're at historic highs, there is no, look, there is no nothing, number to look at. It's all clear blue sky above you. If you're looking at buying pullbacks, You'll have to define it in dollars and or percent, but then like what's the trigger, right? Because you still don't want to buy into a falling vehicle sort of instrument, so to speak, because you don't know when the selling's going to end. Because don't forget, <clears throat> you can have upside momentum and downside momentum. I don't typically want to buy things long, buying into downside momentum, even if it's a short term or a counter trend move. So there has to be a catalyst that you would look at in the pullback, right, in the stall, however you want to call it, there's a million names for it, where the trend resumes. Now, for that, you might look at, you know, Victor's one, two, three reversal. You could certainly look at two B reversals, as he wrote about in Methods of a Wall Street Master, or whatever proprietary way you look for reversals, right? If you marry that with volume, it, you might find that also to be very, very helpful. But I would definitely change my way of thinking if I was a pullback buyer, which I'm not, in thinking that there's a better value for me if the price comes back. Now, you can counter, I know, by saying something like, well, if you look at the Bollinger Bands, things mean revert. There's truth to that. But at when? At what point? Because if you looked at the big move in Coinbase, it really didn't have anything that was mean reverting until it had put in the high. So you still miss the whole move. If you're okay doing that, then there's no problem. Most of the traders that I know don't mind getting into stuff and getting stopped out. The thing that bothers them the most is missed opportunity. The opportunity cost, believe it or not. Even though it doesn't technically show up on the P&L, it's the fact that they have you know real-time quotes and 45 monitors and somehow something slipped through the cracks and it moved big. And it was within their parameters and their risk management and their tolerance for risk that they could have been in on the trade. That's very, very painful because in many, many ways, if you look at those, and especially if you're like a follower of, say, a Bill O'Neill, for example, they're staggering into their winners and adding more. And even if they're not using margin, oftentimes, you know, you can still make over 100% a year on your capital if you divide up your risk appropriately, add to your winners, and let the move unfold. Those are the things that you pray for. And, um, you know, for those of you that are doing short-term trading, you know, you might want to consider extending your holding periods if you're struggling because to me it's like the market was doing all the work that's the phrase that i <clears throat> excuse me excuse me like to use and that when a, a move starts to unfold you're already in the winning trade all you have to do is stay in it <clears throat> and then you could emotionally figure out what are you comfortable giving back you know the following morning during the week and then the following Monday, if you take things home with you over Friday, which, you know, tends to be, you know, if you're in a strong enough move, the, those, the wind is at your back. So, you know, I would definitely come up, if you want to do that better, with an idea of what is the reversal. You have to define the, what the pullback is in dollars, and better yet, in percentage points. Know what the mean is 
and then and then well, how do you trade after the retracement? How close does it have to get to the mean in order for you to generate a buy signal? And then you have to be comfortable knowing that if none of that ever happens, you might miss out on the trade. Now, it's one thing to miss something that moves 10%, maybe 20%, depends on your personality. But to miss out on something that's moved 100% in a two-month period of time and you're not in that trade, you really need to look at your own behavior and what you think about value and how you get into names. Because I can assure you, it's going to happen again. There are going to be moves that are pronounced that come out of nowhere and they move and they just go. And if you're waiting for momentum to stall and that doesn't happen, you've missed a really good opportunity that was right in your, in your valley wick. You see what I'm saying? So it's, that's why I try to do this channel. It's not so much about reading charts. It's like, where's your mindset at? Because you get what you think about. And I'm not wishing bad on anybody and saying, like, if you bought that, you know, there was a vicious two-day correction in Coinbase that brought it back to the mean. And it, I think it was like a three ATR move against, you know, put, if I've got my numbers correct, it was about 180 was, the, was that high, near-term high. And the mean at the time was about 150 when the ATR was 10. And so then you're saying, okay, I can buy the pullback after a three ATR correction, but how do I know it's over? How do I know the pullback is over? Whether it's corrective activity, mean reversion, you can call it what you want. But the more clear you are with those definitions, I think the better you're going to do because then you could attach specific behavior to those types of trades and lock it in. And then it's the consistency of the behavior that's going to help you get the results. Make sense? Okay. Appreciate everyone writing in with that. It's hard to know where the follow-up questions are going to come from and what they're going to be about. I try to anticipate them and make each episode chock full of benefit. Um, and sometimes things slip through the cracks because I just don't know what part of any particular episode is going to resonate with, with a person and get them you know, to write or comment. It's all legit, though. We're all in this together, right? We're all learning. We have a community. Send in your stuff. I learn a lot, too about these things based on your questions. It's, all, it's very, very healthy for everybody. Uh, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you all being here very much, and I'll see you tomorrow.